display and demeanor that commands respect and instills public confidence in the office of a judge or judicial officers. As such, all judges and judicial officers in Kenya are not strangers to the fact that transparency, diligence, and commitment to upholding the rule of law are paramount in guiding the proper conduct of their duties and fostering public trust in the legal system that they are supposed to represent. It is the Judicial Services Commission's firm position that corruption or misconduct of any kind in the judiciary is addressed with the utmost priority. We maintain that upholding integrity in the discharge of judicial duties is non-negotiable and in fact goes to the heart of the fundamental right to access justice. We want to assure Kenyans that Judicial Service Commission has continued to deal firmly with all the allegations of corruption and misconduct presented to the Commission. We also want to emphasize that to remove a judge from office, the provisions are specified in the Constitution and they are inability to perform the functions of the office arising from mental or physical incapacity, a breach of the code of conduct prescribed for judges of the superior courts by an act of parliament. Another ground for removal is bankruptcy, incompetence, or gross misconduct or misbehavior. This has spelled out in the Constitution. Where any or some of these grounds are arranged, the concerned judge is entitled to due process. And I repeat, a judge is entitled to due process before an independent tribunal is appointed to inquire into the allegations. Similarly, should the tribunal remove, recommend a removal of a judge, that judge also has a right to challenge the decision of the tribunal through an appeal process to the Supreme Court. And ladies and gentlemen from the media, you are aware of this process because about three weeks, two weeks ago, a matter went through that process all the way to the Supreme Court. In the year 2023, I want to tell Kenyans that the Commission received 72 petitions or complaints against judges. 13 of those complaints were dismissed by the Commission because they were touching on the merits of decisions which should be redressed by way of an appeal. This Commission is not an appeal court. It cannot go into the merit of the decision to find out whether the judge was wrong or right in arriving at a certain decision. Six judges were asked to respond to the petitions, out of which four petitions were admitted for hearing. And the hearing is going on. 49 of these petitions are undergoing preliminary evaluation by the Commission because the exercise involves the Commission calling for the files, calling for the parties to hear from them before making a decision one way or the other. So 49 are undergoing that process. It is also important to remind ourselves and the members of public that three judges 
left the judiciary in the year 2023. One judge opted to exit the service through early retirement instead of facing the tribunal. Two judges were subjected to the tribunal process established by the Constitution and they have since been removed from the judicial service. In the last two financial years, the Commission also considered 85 disciplinary cases against judicial officers and staff. Two judicial officers were dismissed from service, while five, owing to the evidence provided and through a thorough consideration by the Commission, were absolved and reinstated back to the service. Two cases against judicial officers are pending determination by the Commission. The Commission has also dismissed 71 judicial staff from the service, while five were reinstated. The nature of disciplinary cases that the Commission has handled include sorry citing for bribes or corruption, financial malpractice, absence from duty, acting without jurisdiction, desertion or absconding from duty, forgery of academic certificates, the reduction of duty, negligence in handling court exhibits, disappearance of court files, substance abuse. As a matter of fact, we have had four judicial officers dismissed because of substance abuse, intoxication, and other reasons that have been given to the officers. Information detailing the petition and complaints handled by the Commission is captured in the Judicial Service Commission's annual report, which is always submitted to the President and to the Parliament. The same report is also transmitted to the public by way of the State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice annual report which we rendered to the nation in November. And the same way that report is transmitted to the President, it is also transmitted to the Parliament, and we are obligated to publish it in the Kenyan Gazette, which we did. It is also available in the Judiciary website and also the JSC website. In addition, we want to assure the public that the Commission is committed to providing regular updates on the cases presented before it for investigation and action so that the members of public are kept abreast with what is going on at the Judicial Service Commission, the nature of cases we are handling, and the outcome of those cases. The Judiciary and the Commission, on account of our dedication to accountability, we have also put in place the following measures to enhance transparency and entrench integrity in the Judiciary. One, we have embarked on empowering the public to know what is going on in the judiciary, which we do through the court users' committees, and also by owning um, the public to account, the JSC has developed the code of conduct for judges, judicial officers, and staff that code of conduct went through public participation. It was approved by Parliament in the year 2020. 
the commission has taken it upon itself to disseminate copies of this code of conduct to all judges, judicial officers and staff so that they are aware of the principles that guide the public offices that they own, that they own these offices on behalf of the sovereign people of this country. Number two, to strengthen enforcement and increase accountability, the Commission has prepared a draft complaints or petition processing regulations. These regulations are now undergoing public participation and will subsequently be submitted for deliberations also before the National Assembly. In addition, the Commission built its own capacity to be able to process these complaints by establishing a directorate within the Commission to deal with the complaints management and investigations. We also created a directorate of legal services geared towards fast-tracking the processing of petitions and of complaints against judges and judicial officers. Ladies and gentlemen, to foster transparency and accountability, the judiciary has developed and operationalized the judiciary complaint management system, which we call JCMS. This is an internal complaint mechanism for registration and processing of handling uh, complaints within the office of the Chief Justice, the judiciary's both person. This office receives complaints. It also has a platform for feedback from the court station liaison officers on the complaints raised against the stations. The system has been configured with a reply function that keeps the complainant informed by way of an instant text message and email feedback to the clients upon registration of the complaints. They are updated on every step until the resolution of their complaints. In the realm of finance, the judiciary developed the judiciary finance management system this system has promoted transparency and accountability in our financial management. The judiciary regularly conducts customer satisfaction service and annual performance on judges, judicial officers and staff. As a matter of fact, we have a form that we sign every day to say what have we done. If you are a judge, how many cases have you had? how many witnesses, how many rulings or judgments, and that information is collated every week, every month, and at the end of the year. It's called DCRT. Indeed, the private sector and civil society organizations have in the recent past recognized certain judges, magistrates, and judicial officers for their exemplary performance in the administration of justice, and they have been threatened and awarded. Similarly, most court operations are automated, leading to enhanced accuracy and consistency, thus ensuring that justice is administered impartially. Additionally, the judiciary case tracking system, what we call CTS, has enhanced accountability throughout the legal proceedings. Further, the judiciary has adopted a proactive approach and developed and operationalized manuals, practice directions, and guidelines to guide the day-to-day -day operations of all the courts. Today in the media is so, it is reported even the guidelines by the Supreme Court on virtual hearing is also published. The judiciary also invited the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission 
to look into our systems and assess the registries and all the administrative procedures to flag out areas that are susceptible to abuse for corrupt purposes. And I want to tell Kenyans, this is the first time that an arm of government has invited the anti-graft body to look through their systems and see how they can be strengthened to respond to the issues of corruption. It is regrettable that the leadership of the executive and also the legislature in the recent public declarations have threatened not to obey court orders because of corruption. These threats and declarations are extremely serious and a monumental assault to the Constitution. It is also an assault to the rule of law and the very stability of the nation and can lead to chaos and anarchy in our motherland. The declaration that they will no longer obey court orders and the subsequent actual defiance of the orders granted by the courts are untenable and amount to contempt of courts. And if this course is allowed to continue unabated, we are on the precipice of a constitutional crisis that can lead to untold civil strife. The judiciary and the Judicial Service Commission cannot countenance this and will not be part of it. It is not lost to the Commission that the robes that we wear as judges and judicial officers magnify the conduct. We are supposed to stand out, meaning judges and judicial officers must be on to the higher ethical standards if they are to keep the trust and confidence of the people that we serve. The code of conduct, which was formulated from the provisions of Article 168, 1B of the Constitution, obligates judges to preserve the integrity of the judiciary and to avoid even the appearance of impropriety. Thus, the decisions of a judge or a judicial officer made in the course of the discharge of judicial function cannot be questioned except through review or through an appeal. And a judge is not liable in an action or suit in respect of anything done or made to be done in good faith in the law for performance of a judicial function. Our democracy is pegged on the strength of the checks and balances in our governance structure. The independence of the judiciary from a fused executive through parliamentary coalition is more important than ever before. We therefore urge Kenyans not to lose sight of our history, very painful history, and what lies ahead. Our prayer tonight as the Commission is that we all continue to safeguard the Constitution according to our oath of office and according to the law. On our part, we commit to do this. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Do we take the three?
Thank you very much for those questions. Um, the first one was, okay, where, whether we have reached out to the president. We have written requesting for an appointment with His Excellency the President so that uh, we as the Commission uh, can have a dialogue to discuss and find out what is the real issue. Uh, he might have received reports uh, because we have the uh, various machineries and agencies that are charged the responsibility of correcting information. And we would like to engage him so that he can give us that information. Uh, because we all have a responsibility of solving our problems in this country. We all recognize corruption is endemic, it is a problem, it is unacceptable, it is condemned, it is actually a criminal offense. So if there are cases involving uh, people in the judiciary, judges, judicial officers, or judiciary staff of corruption, then that is why the JSC was established to deal with those disciplinary matters. So we will be asking His Excellency to submit uh, that report so that we can deal with it because you recognize under the Constitution 2010, the Fair Administration Action Act you have always to give a hearing to the other side. Even murder cases, when people are accused of murder, we don't condemn them and sentence them and convict them, we hear them. So even judges are human beings who deserve to be given an opportunity to be heard. And judges get hurt, especially when their names are dragged in public and they are condemned as corrupt and there is no evidence that has been presented to them to respond. So we'll be looking out for that dialogue. We have written and I believe His Excellency is going to give us an appointment and we are ready to go anytime we are called uh, so that we can have that dialogue. Uh, we stand for dialogue, collaboration and cooperation uh, because, like somebody was describing, the government is a three-legged stool. We are also part of the government. And we are concerned uh, that there are issues that are hurting the executive and the government, and we are also part of that government. So we need to know them so that we deal with them. Uh, the next question is whether we are intimidated by the marriage of attacks. I think I stated that in my first statement when it happened. I said when judges are attacked publicly and they are hearing a matter, live matters, they feel intimidated. They feel harassed. They feel like they are being ordered to rule in a certain way. Actually, they get embarrassed. Because if you rule this way, they will say it's because you are turned off. If you rule the other way, it's like, look, we told you. You see? So this is why we have a principle in law that is called sub -judice. When the matter is pending in court, in as much as possible, let us not discuss it in public uh, domain. Because the judges are not in that public domain. 
the, it is meant to influence the man, it is wrong. That's a principle in the common law of sub -judice, to observe sub -judice. So I would urge our politicians to stop discussing live matters in public, to allow the judiciary, the, to allow the judges and judicial officers to engage with the matters objectively and deal with those matters according to the evidence and according to the law. And if somebody is dissatisfied, to follow the appeal mechanism, because this is how we structured the Constitution. And it was a painful process of arriving at, let us have an orderly way of dealing with complaints. The last question from the KTN was whether the President has filed any complaints. Not any that we are aware. Even today, we were dealing with the complaints that we have, that we have uh, shared with you, uh, unless it has come when we were in the process, uh, we haven't received any, but we are ready to receive. Um, I think somebody said on the news yesterday, one will be fired on Thursday. We are ready to receive it, even if it comes earlier than Thursday, because that's what we do. Our offices are open to receive. Even after hours, you can file online, and we will receive it uh, the next day. So thank you very much for your time, uh, and God bless you.